Neighbor is trailing. Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. L Did I say LNA Does Audio Stuff? Hey, in this video, I show five easy but very, 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 very powerful tips and tricks on how to create an arrangement. Some of them are about, like, actually the structure of the song. Some of them are a bit more about music theory, about fitting things together so that you don't waste time to be confused because we don't want to be confused, we just want to get songs done. And in two weeks I will publish a video where will I, where will I? Where I will actually show in 15 minutes in action how I use these tips and tricks in action, in uncut production video. So let's get into the five tips and tricks now. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Okay, so the first tip is less is more. Let's base the arrangement around the kind of core instruments. Because if we just add, 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 then we get confused and then nothing fits together. So if we have like two to four elements that really fit together, then the outcome will most likely to be quite good. <laughs> so example, I have here three samples. So there's bass, there's drums, and then there's like a keyboard. They're just clips from a like a pack, I think. And what are we looking for here in these three clips? Firstly, we're looking, of course, like the groove, that they're in the same scale, that they vibe with each other. They just like... There's also something that is like a, almost like a theory that we can base this on why they sound good together. It's because they're not masking, they're not clashing, and what that is to do with is frequency bands. So if I go here and for spectrum analyzer, I will show you. So frequency range is this range. Well, it starts from around 11 hertz all the way to 21 kilohertz. So that is a frequency spectrum. We can see all the frequencies here. So what we can almost think is that we can place our three or four samples and then everything else into this frequency spectrum. So we are covering it fully, but we are thinking that every single instrument or element in the mix have their own space. For example, we could have our bass and drums, lower end of drums, like kick drums, around this area, so around the 100 hertz, okay? And then like the higher parts of drums around the mid area here and then we have the synth part which is around one to maybe somewhere here like five maybe five kilohertz and they of course spread even more wider than those but those are like the key areas where they sound good if we have a look at example the spectrum on just so that's the chord progression there. And then we have the kind of dee, dee, the higher notes around two kilohertz around there. And then if we go to the bass, so we can see a massive amount of volume around this area. The main area is basically the low and we want the boom, doo -doo 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 -doo, like low sounds. So that is around the 100 hertz. And then let's have a look what happens in the drums. Okay, so what we hear is that the kick is around 100. So we need to make sure that the in the mixing process then that the kick and the bass are working together. But otherwise, it's really a lot about the mid frequencies bit clashing with the synth chord, but mostly the hi-hat and the snare are in the high end. So they are now like all occupying slightly different areas of the frequency spectrum. Let's put it this way. So highest is the chord very high nice and then the next one we have the beats coming with the chord and then we have the bass on the bottom 
And then in the mixing process after the production, of course, the mixing engineer would need to then separate the frequencies even more so that they all sound like really good in their place. But generally, when you start thinking about the arrangement of like how everything fits together, then thinking about them in separate bands like that can really help. Point number two. So cover the whole scale. So now we were talking about frequencies. So we're going to now talk about scale as a like compositional arrangement way. Don't worry if you don't understand too much about music theory. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to explain this as easy as possible. We already have this high note here and we're detecting which octave it's working on right now. So what I'm meaning now is that instead of us adding another instrument that works on those same notes and the same octave, maybe we can work on the same notes, but octave lower. Or we can work on the same scale, but with other notes on the different octave. So like that. So basically we're working on through the whole scale. We're not trying to, we're trying to complement the elements that are already there. Only if you're wanting to layer things. So you want example that this clip would be example on the left and you want to layer it with something that is going to be on the right channel uh, with the same notes. But otherwise, if we want everything separate and clear and tidy, and sounding good generally then we want to add these harmonies so example then I could just add in some of those harmonies uh, with other notes like that we are working through the whole scale we're not trying to put everything in the one area of the scale even if it's a different instrument add another instrument that goes in a harmony with the instrument that you already have it existing <laughs> subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Okay, so the next thing is arrangement workflow. So there's so many different ways of actually arranging like sections of the song. So my personal favorite is actually first working the arrangement in the session view. So example, I have these four clips. So the first step would be for me to arrange them in this session view. So I could start with example, just the higher two notes. So I'm arranging them on the scenes. So we have the higher harmony uh, synth and then we have the bass. And what I can do is just rename this and call it intro. And I'm just going to create like very rough sections of what the song could be like intro verse chorus situation. So then I'm going to have a section where I'm going to have the beat coming in. So that would be verse. Sure's verse. And then after that, we're going to have a section where the higher harmony is going to come in as well. So I'm just copy pasting all these different uh, clips here and I'm going to call that chorus. Again, in this point, it's really important that when you're arranging, you don't think about the outcome, you think about the process. Just making sure that the elements, the sp very simple elements that we have work together as best as they can. Okay, so the next thing is that I'm going to actually record it from the session view to the arrangement view. So what I'm going to do is just zero all the clips, press record and start playing. So we have an intro coming on first. And after 
after this, we're going to go to the arrangement view and now it's all deactivated. So I'm going to activate it from the red button there. And now we have the material that we have just created in the session view. We have it in the arrangement view. It might be that you want to create everything in arrangement view first. Sometimes I work directly in here and I start just like looping things here. I start cutting and I start like uh, especially man sample manipulation in this view just as depends on your approach. So tip number four. Before we start going into the browser and the VSTs and like adding and adding and adding and then and then like scrolling million instruments and not figuring it out, I would recommend that you're gonna try to sample manipulate and manipulate what uh, and create variations of the stuff that you already have. Example, we have this. So example, what I could do is just adding it to Simpler. It's one of the easiest way of creating something new is add a new Simpler track and then just drop any of these samples into Simpler. And then we could create a melody bit with it. So what I could do is go to the slice mode and I'm gonna transpose it to example uh, 12 semitones up. And then what I could go is to add MIDI effect, example arpeggiator. So example, we can create a rhythm using a arpeggiator. So for that, I need to just go here and add a one long note. And let's go to E flat because that's basically what the whole scale is. And then we can go to the controls, we can filter it, we can add LFO. I could just try these two and see how. Very high, so even higher than the highest that was already the highest. We have that kind of highest like melody like hook on the top of everything. If you want to learn more about abbreviator, I've done a whole video about it. So check that out down below if you want to learn more about it. Okay, and then we have number five tip and trick for you for arrangement. And that is embrace the quietness. The more creative confusion happens in our brain when we when we are creating stuff, the more stuff we want to add. Coco Chanel, Chanel, every time she went out of a door, she always took one accessorize or something off. And I feel like that's the same with arrangement is instead of adding, think what you can take off or what you can manipulate from what you already have. So example transitions are something that I personally feel really strongly about that should have always quietness in them. So example, I can just go and cut a certain like drum or some beat or something away before we go to the next section of the song. Because then what we can do is example, go and find a sample um, and put like clap find a nice clap like that. We're gonna put that in the gap. So we are embracing the silence. <laughs> Example like that. Same way than when we create structure. Uh, so we have intro, verse, chorus, and what we can always do here is add locator so we know what's going on. Intro, I'm right clicking on the top bar and writing verse, and then chorus, that one didn't go exactly there. And then example, we could go here and there, there could be like a bridge here. Okay, so the bridge, I want it to be something different. I want to add space. So quietness again. So uh, what I could do is add just now eight bars of drums. So example, I could create another variation by using something I already have in here. I could use the same thing actually the same one. Uh, so I'm just going to create another audio track, add that there. And what I could this time do is example, go here and just reverse it. See what happens. So I could have that as reverse, then I could copy that, maybe put it 
12 semitones down. Like that. So we're creating a little lift here. What I want to do is embrace quietness. So now we had a very high chorus and I want to have a little bit of a drop happening after that. So I can do it either with the volume fader. So I can go to automation and example, just go here, mixer and then volume and just add a volume fader like this. Sounds amazing. Another way of doing it is just uh, auto filter, auto filter. There we go. So we can always automate the frequency and add this low pass filter where we are not actually cutting away. We're just filtering it in. And now I can just copy this filter and take it to the other track as well. Maybe not that much just cause it's, uh, it's just a lot like right now. So you know what I'm going to do is add that also on the break beats. Quietness, embrace the quietness. And that also adds dynamics. So it's like the quiet before the storm and this the quiet after the storm. So that those points that are not stripped back are more powerful. So we just add power by being more quiet sometimes. Does that make sense? I'm just going to show one more thing is example. We can now copy and paste this chorus after the drop that we did and see how that affected. And we can do the same little drop and lift situation here as we had it earlier. I also have a whole video about drops and lifts. So that's also linked down below. So let's listen to this. Maybe this has space for vocals or something. materials we managed to create something pretty impressive and now now starts the point where you start adding stuff so you don't get confused we don't want to be confused so that we are more creative so that we don't pluck ourselves hey thank you so much for watching please subscribe please hit the bell icon so that you will see example the video that comes out in next couple weeks about doing these tips and tricks in actual action and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when I post it. And thank you so much for everybody who is part of my Patreon family. You guys are absolute legends. We have so much fun in there. We have live streams, we have uh, extra content. I give you templates and presets. And these are the people who are my Patreon family right now. And if you wanna be in this list, then please go to the link down below and you can be part of my family as well. See you here next week because I post every single week. Almost over two years now. So that's happening. <laughs> Bye.